classroom setup day, so excuse the hair and outfit. I'm not, you know, looking cute. Um, it is <clears throat> the Wednesday before school starts, and I am going into my classroom. I've heard that my floor is waxed and ready for me, so here I go. All right, now that the classroom is no longer covered with paper everywhere, let me show you kind of the main areas in my classroom and tell you what I intend to do with them. This table is the place where they grab their do nows, grab any returned work. This is kind of their command central and obviously I will show you guys it when it's all tricked out. Um, this is my info board. So I don't really have a classroom theme, but I really love like holographic stuff. And so I have a lot of that in my classroom, like sparkly holographic. And then I do have a color palette. I try to keep everything black, blue, green, and light purple, which is kind of the color of my wall. So on this bulletin board, you can see I have some just inspirational quotes, but I also have a couple functional things. Over here, I have QR codes um, for kind of common requests that I get from students. They lead to Google Forms that I have, and that's been a really great system, especially anybody else who teaches high school juniors and seniors knows you need those letter of recommendation requests organized. Uh, but this is from Right On With Miss G, I believe. And this is her bulletin board with um, feedback for students. So you can tell them one of these areas they need feedback on. And there's actually a QR code for how to fix that. If that's wrong um, and it's not from her, I will write a little subtitle explaining that. <laughs> these are definitely from Right On With Miss G. These are her growth mindset writing quotes and I think they're so perfect for a writing focused classroom. I teach AP Lang and composition so we do a lot of writing in here. So this area over here is my desk area. I'm going to be moving that over there by the window and this kind of teacher desk secondary one will be parallel to it or perpendicular to it rather. I like to put gifts from students and awards I've won and all that stuff will be back here. Um, this bulletin board, I'm trying to decide what to do, hopefully cover up all this kind of saggy, I think it's water damage. I don't really know what's going on there, but um, I think this will be a calendar. I like to keep a calendar behind my desk. And then this is our data wall. I didn't want to put the data wall where the sign said it was. So I made this little arrow out of paper and this bulletin board is our data wall. And I try to put quotes there that encourage kids to not you know, feel judged by their data. We can talk all day about data walls and what we think of them. Um, I have a file cabinet here with some stuff students have given me and some stuff that I find inspiring. And we won't go into the desk right now because it's probably a mess. So that's kind of my area. Um, this is where I teach from most of the time. I have a Promethean board and a projector and I'll have my laptop and a dot cam hooked up over there. And actually most of the time, because my classroom is so big, I will be teaching from this area. I'll sit here um, if I'm sitting at any point in the class rather than going all the way over there in the corner. That's really more where I am during my prep or after school or if I'm ever doing small group conferencing, that kind of thing. One of the weird things about my room is that it is long and narrow. So the whiteboards are actually at the back of the room. You'll notice the projectors up here. Whiteboards are back there. And I've tried different things to kind of fix that. I'm still thinking. I think I might do like a double horseshoe for the beginning of the year because while later in the year I want them to be more student-centered at the beginning of the year as we're doing procedures and just establishing culture I like to have a little more of all the students looking in one direction um, and I like having the horseshoe because it makes discussions really easy. Let's see over here I have a bulletin board that I like to uh, use as like a word wall um, so I still have my Ethos Pathos Logos, those are also from TPT. I will describe who they're from in the description below or I'll pop it up on a subtitle. These are my kids' six word memoirs from last year. We made them using Canva. If you don't use Canva in your classroom, I highly recommend you check it out. Um, these are some of their six word memoirs. So they chose the words, they created the posters. I think they did such a good job. Um, I was very proud of them. I will definitely be doing this activity again sometime in the first few weeks of school with this year's kids. I will put my classroom expectations here as well as sort of helpful um, posters that might describe their unit or anything like really instructional I want them to be looking at frequently. I also always have this poster here that I got on a discount at a teacher store 
it's kind of old school, but it's so important. <laughs> Over here, we have the classroom library, this awesome Maya Angelou quote, which I did not put up there. My previous teacher did, but I love it. Um, so here is the main part of our classroom library. I'm very blessed to have a big classroom library that was here when I got here. And then I've, you know, supplemented it. I did have it sorted into categories, but they've kind of fallen apart over the last year. So I might need to redo that. So this tile area over here, I kind of think of as two things. It's sort of a relaxing space and it's a drama space. So I have my drama class over here. We sit in a circle and we do games and acting and I do drama rehearsals in this space because our auditorium is in a different building. So um, it's just a big empty space. I do put a couch over there. My couch is currently locked in a closet because my kids were not um, handling it very well at the end of the year. So I locked the couch away for the last week of school last year because of my 10th graders. So um, yeah, the, the vibe here is a little more casual. I'm gonna put some comfy chairs over here and a couch over here. Then over here, I have um, my shelf of books that I've purchased. And those are, you know, I call them Miss Walter Recommends, um, as well as my bulletin board for drama. And everything on this wall, I believe, is Shakespeare. I'm kind of a Shakespeare nerd. So I have some assignments that my students did when they were ninth graders. I have this really cute Romeo and Juliet <laughs> Lego poster, which I love. Um, I have this quote I made myself, just printed out the letters on uh, colored cardstock and laminated them last year before I had access to a Cricut. And then these are also from TPT, we'll link in the description. These are um, examples from Shakespeare of various literary devices. And I like that they have some kind of more high level ones like synecdoche and apostrophe and chiasmus. And, things my AP kiddos need to know. So yeah, that's the room tour. I'm gonna go um, do some unpacking. I'm going to maybe say hi to my teacher friends. I'm gonna eat a little bit of the snack I brought with me and have some laminating to do. So hope you enjoyed that little very brief tour. All right, I've been here for about an hour and a half or so and have organized some stuff and had a snack and went to talk to some friends, some teacher friends, and did some laminating. So let me show you what I'm kind of up to today. This is a bunch of stuff that I brought with me today. Um, so our textbook, we use Pearson My Perspectives for English 11, and it's color-coded. So all the whole class learning is always green, small group learning is always light blue, etc. So I wanted to create like a color code key um, so kids know kind of what section they're on. I laminated it uh, and I'm I'm trying to decide if I'm going to cut the laminate off the sides and in between and hang it up or just hang it up with the laminate like showing underneath because then at least they'll all be like in line this way. So I'm thinking about that. Um, this is just a bunch of <laughs> random things. I have the parts of a figure of language bulletin board that I got off Amazon. It's so cute. It uses little peacocks and has examples for everything. Highly recommend it. It was really cheap. I'll link it in the description. I have some Common Core Standard stuff. I have a plastic tablecloth I'm gonna use for that bulletin board over there as the background. I have this cute little desk flag from the Dollar Tree. You will learn I'm obsessed with the Dollar Tree. Um, some really cute clipboards. Another binder with stuff for drama. Um, I got these super cute little things, I believe at Target, and they say, I want, I can, I am, I love, I will and then just like things, um, message me ideas of how I can use this because I don't know what to do with it yet, but I think I could do something cool with it. Um, I got one of these fun like mermaidy pillows that matches my classroom colors for my couch. Got it for like $3, so that was good. And then I have a bunch of these. These are from Stacy Lloyd and um, they're persuasive devices posters. So I'm gonna put those up too. And I have a bunch of these reusable dry erase pockets. I think I'm going to use these for my uh, journal prompts for drama. We shall see. So I get to decide what I'm going to do with all this stuff now. But first, I think I'm going to move my desk where I want it to be so I'm not dealing with the wrong setup here. So opinion question. I took that Peacock Figurative Language Bulletin Board set and I put it up on this wall because I thought it would be a nice place to put it it's really more of a reference of things they should already know. Um, 
and each one has a little example and a definition. Um, what do you think? Do you think it's confusing? I tried to make it so the colors kind of lined up with the definition, but what would you do? Would you keep it or do something different? I'm trying to decide. Also, I put up a calendar that I bought at Target on this wall over here. So that I'm going to fill out and hopefully keep track of assignments on there. So, and you can see my desk area is somewhat more what it should be. So things are coming right. together. All right, we have come to the end. It is 3.30, so after I would be here on a normal school day. So I'm gonna go home. Um, I'm very pleased with what I got done. I'm very hot and sweaty. And I feel like this was a good step. Um, got me ready for coming back next week. So I have a week of PD, professional development, and then the adventure begins. So, um, so let me show you where we're at now at the end of day one. All right, so my desk area has been cleaned off. I now have my two tables kind of nicely set up, which I'm excited about. I have this really great organizer full of my uh, clipboards that I use and it's cute. The sign is now up, printer is up. Some of my stuff is on the wall now. I did do this bulletin board with the black paper and you can see I got this fun holographic stripe. Um, I really like using that by the window because it catches the light and it's really pretty. So what else did I do? I hung this calendar on this bulletin board. I got this in the Target dollar spot or the Bullseye's Playground, I guess it's called. And I'm excited to use this to track assignments. Um, don't mind the pile of trash or the things I'm gonna do next year, but da 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 da. I have a seating arrangement, yay! So I took down all those chairs and that was a lot of work. Um, so I'm gonna do this double horseshoe, have all students facing this way. Obviously, um, my tables are sort of different colors, which is fine, but I think I got them pretty uniform and kind of set up a little bit of my teaching space. Over here, I added this, uh, these little Dollar Tree work signs. That's where I'm gonna be hanging some student work. I did end up hanging the color coding thing with the laminate. We'll see how I feel about that. On the board, I found this really pretty rainbowy washi tape at the Dollar Tree. So I used that, that's all one color tape, to mark out where I'm gonna put the date and my email and my office hours info. Over here, I left this bulletin board blank so that I could have students help me make a thematic unit board. A lot of plans for this area here, and I have plans for that area over there. So I'm excited. Right, I hope that you enjoyed this little look into my preparation process. I'm just beginning, so you'll get more from me. And please subscribe, like, follow me on Instagram. I'd love to hear from you. Um, tell me what your favorite part and least favorite part of classroom setup is if you're a teacher. And if you're not, tell me something that surprises you about how hard teachers work. <laughs> All right, have a great day.